So, let us consider a real number, set of real number. So, set of real number means you know that it contains natural number, whole number, natural number, then uh, uh, integers, so negative numbers, negative uh, positive integer, negative integer, then rational number that those can be represented by p by q form and also irrational number. So, combining all those uh, then uh, it, uh, it form as a real number. So, this real number we usually denote by this line real. So, this is 0, 1, 2 like this, this is minus 1, minus 2 like this. So, we usually denote like this. Now, uh, in this real number, we want to take some subset. So, you can consider suppose a is a uh, 0, 1, this subset, okay. And this sigma field generated by a, suppose this 0, 1. So, what is the sigma field generated by this? So, because we, we already discussed it. So, this is uh, if you consider whole R, suppose whole R, because we need to satisfy these three properties. So, these three properties, S has to be in the class of subset. If any element in this subset, uh, in this set C, then this complement also has to be part of this uh, set. And any infinite collection, if you have in C, then then union of this uh, countable infinite union of this A i also has to be in C. Now, uh, if you consider A is equal to R, it is a infinite because all those example what we discussed up to this here you can see that it is finite set. So, that is why you can say uh, power set uh, content to the power n number of elements. But if, we, if it is a infinite like real number or even if you take uh, the interval uh, 0 to 1. So, then it is a countable infinite. So, if you consider the power set, it is huge. So, uh, we cannot just count it, just you cannot say 2 to the bar n type of things. So, it is not a finite. So, um, we represent it by some cardinality, cardinal number. So, cardinality. So, this is kind of some different concept. So, the, then we, we do not want to go in that complex. So, that is why we want some particular sigma field that is actually useful for us. So, here um, if you consider the sigma field here, sorry, yeah. So, here we are considering this uh, uh, set R and then we are we want to consider all subset of, uh, so sigma field generated by this element 0. So, then by uh, properties 1 it has to be, this set has to be here R. Then it is complement also, so that is nothing but the null set. Now, this set also here because we are saying sigma field generated by this set A. So, then it has to be here. So, then it is complement also has to be there. So, that is nothing but 0, 1 complement. So, then you can see that if you take the union, then it will be R. So, this is the smallest sigma field generated by this set A. So, this is a sigma field. Now, if you consider some special because uh, we need to uh, some more uh, subsets are there in real line. So, let us consider sigma field generated by suppose A and B are two real number, any real number such that A is less than B, sorry, A is less than equal to B some real number. Now, consider a sub collection, suppose let us, so let us denote some C, this is nothing but nothing but all a looks like this such that a b a real number a less than b suppose if you consider this collection and then you take sigma field generated by this c all real number so suppose let us denote this is c1 c1 now, another collection we can take C2. This is suppose minus infinity to x such that x is a real number. So, now let us consider sigma field generated by C2. Now, we are will not go through more details about it, but you can it can be proved that even if you can take open both open or this closed this open like that any any of this and then uh, you take the sigma field generated by C1 and if you consider sigma field generated by C2, then this sigma field will be same as this sigma field because all 
collection all the set it will be included by sigma field generated by C2. Here also all collection whatever uh, you have to include complement, you have to countable union all these things you have to include. So, then you can see that uh, both sigma fields are same and this kind of sigma field it is known as some it is it is it, is, it has some known name. So, this sigma field generated by C2 it is known as some Borel sigma field. Borel sigma field. Okay. So, this Borel sigma field contains all the intervals. So, all half open uh, half closed intervals. So, uh, even minus many to x intervals all this. Uh, so, this is called the Borel sigma field. So, sigma field generated by. So, this is denoted by suppose the script B. So, let us denote it by script B. It is nothing but Borel sigma field. So, so in particular, so it is very useful. Uh, we will see that how we utilize this concept Borel sigma field. So, because all uh, kind of set you can think uh, most of the cases uh, it will be inside Borel sigma field. There are some few, it is not Borel, we say Borel not Borel measurable. So, there are some Liebig measurable, not Liebig measurable. We are not going in details uh, in that direction just to understand the basic things. So, now if you consider a sample space, now we are going back to the uh, our uh, concept of sample space. So, random experiment then you are have a sample space. This sample space it may be uh, any abstract set, it may not be set of real number, subset of a real number, it may be anything and then you have a collection of subset of S uh, that form a, bo, bo, a sigma field, a sigma field. Then you have this collection that is actually your space, we say it is a probability space whenever we are defining a probability on that. And now in that uh, again in the real number system, we have a real number and then we have real number and then we have Borel sigma field. So, we want to relate these things, two things. One in the left hand side, it is our usual sub sample space and some collection of subset of S that form a sigma field. And the right hand side, we have the real number system and the Borel sigma field. And we want to relate by a measurable function. So, that sorry, the, so measurable function that we want to relate by a measurable function. So, this x is to the set of real number. So, a function, a measurable function. So, uh, till now whatever we defined uh, measurable function, I hope you have understood it or you can go back and go through again. So, what is measurable function? So, there are two sigma field S1 F1 and S2 F2, S1 is a non-empty set and F1 is a collection of subset of S1 satisfying some properties that is known as sigma field and S2 again another non-empty set and F2 is a collection of subset of S2 that form a sigma field with the two sigma field and a function S1 to S2 is said to be measurable function if for any B belongs to F2, F1 of B belongs to F1. Uh, so, that means in this, so here also if you consider any, so uh, Borel sigma field means it contains at least because it is generated by this kind of sets. So, uh, also this kind of sets also there, you can see that taking intersection, complement, all unions, all these things, you can see that any intervals is there. So, any singleton set also there, you can check that. So, if you take the intersection uh, like uh, closed interval, uh, this complement if you consider uh, that is there if you take union that is there. So, in that way you can find so that some uh, singleton sets also there. So, singleton some number 1, 2, 3, 4 also in sit inside this Borel sigma field. Now, uh, if you uh, consider a measurable function, a measurable function a measurable function x h 2 r okay. So, one minute. A random variable, so we want to define a random variable. So, random variable are, so let us recall again S and C. So, it is a sample space and collection of subset of S that is sigma field and R is the set of real number and B is the Borel sigma field. 
So, Borel, it contains the Borel sets, we say that all the elements in this Borel sigma field, it is nothing but the Borel set. So, a, a random variable, a random variable x is a is a measurable function measurable function from s to r so basically x is a measurable function r that is a uh, s to r so it is a borel measurable we say so what is uh, borel measurable then so any set you take b belongs to this borel set x inverse of b it must belongs to the c so this is x and so sample space s and collection of subset of s is c that is a sigma field and then b is a borel set in b so x inverse b it is nothing but in c so then it is known as so uh, then it is a uh, measurable set so a measurable function x is a measurable function then it is called the random variable so now uh, let us discuss uh, some of the random variables some numerical example some of the example of uh, random variable so let us consider one random experiment random experiment so suppose very simple experiment tossing a coin tossing a coin now what is the sample space as is nothing but head and tail so uh, now we want to take uh, suppose sigma field like c is uh, the power set so we discuss the power set phi it is s then h and t it contains all the subset of s now we can define a function suppose x uh, whenever uh, so x x is a function suppose x of h x is nothing but h to r it is a function from h to r and defined by x of head this is nothing but x of head sorry uh, oh sorry this is this should be a point so so here this is the s it contain two points head and tail and here is some real number so real number is like this 0 1 2 minus 1 minus 2 this is now i want to map this on we want to define a function so just a simple one function i want to define so x of a is equal to 1 and x of tail is equal to 0. Just I want to see whether it is a random variable, it is a function. First of all, it is a function, well defined function. Now, for uh, random variable, because uh, for showing it is a random variable, it is enough to show because we have told that any Borel set you have to consider. Borel set means sigma field generated by all such set. So, it is enough to show that if uh, this this inverse of this set so that means if you because obviously this kind of sets are there in the borel set because it is sigma field generated by this set so let us consider one set borel set so let us consider one borel set suppose b is a set it is nothing but uh, minor it is it looks like so any interval you can take or any so let us consider minus infinity to x one x is a real number so any number so suppose uh, for simplicity let us consider one real number like suppose it is minus 2 okay minus me to so this is a closed interval will take so then what will be x inverse of b x inverse of b so x inverse of b is nothing but all x belongs to the s such that x of basically see that x of x of x should be belongs to 
B. This is the definition of a x inverse of B. So, it is a inverse of this set. Now, B we have considered this. So, it is nothing but same to say that because x x belongs to B means it has to be less than equal to. So, x x x has to be less than equal to minus 2 which is a closed and greater than minus infinity. Okay. So, that is we have to check. So, then uh, what are those points satisfying this relation? Because x of h is 1, x of t is 0, any elements in s is there who is satisfying this property, this x is less than equal to 2? No, because x of h is 1 and x of tail is 0. That is why this is nothing but null set. So, null set is inside C. So, this is true for any other value also. Let us consider another set. Suppose another set B2, it is nothing but minus infinity to suppose 1, or we can take some 0 or any real number, suppose 0 0.5, any real number. So, it may be uh, irrational, irrational any number. So, minus may it is 0 uh, to 5. So, then what is x inverse of B2? x inverse of B2 is nothing but uh, all x belongs to S such that x of x belongs to B2. Now, what is that? B2 means this set. So, all x belongs to S such that x of x uh, greater than minus infinity less than equal to 0.5. So, then uh, our what is our mapping? So, how it is function? x of head is 1, x of tail is 0. So, then you can see that uh, what uh, the number what x of head is 1. So, it is not satisfying by head. x of tail is 0, only 2 points are there in S. We have to check x of tail is 0. So, it is satisfying by this tail. So, this is nothing but this tail. This is also subset of. So, this is also belongs to C. This is also belongs to C. So, in this way, if you consider, you can see that not only that any other Borel set also. So, then uh, any other Borel set, how it is looks like? Suppose in a single strong set. So, we have some kind of notation. So, this notation is like suppose x is equal to 1. So, what is this notation? So, this note it is defined as it is denoted as all x belongs to the uh, sample space S such that x x is equal to 1. For this example, what is that things? Because x of head is 1, uh, so this is nothing but only head. So, then this is also in the uh, in the collection of uh, sigma field uh, this C. So, we denoted this by C. C is nothing but this power set. This is also inside C. So, uh, similarly we can, so this has some kind of notation x is less than equal to suppose 1. So, this notation how it is denoted by this. So, all x belongs to S such that x of x is less than equal to 1 and whenever in the left hand side no nothing. So, that means it is greater than minus infinity. So, this is nothing but uh, what are the value it is satisfying? because x of head is equal to 1 and this is this include uh, less than equal to 1 also x of tail is 0. So, it include t also, it includes uh, head also. So, that means it all uh, in the sample space. So, basically null set also there because null set nothing and also uh, whole. So, basically it is nothing but uh, so yeah. So, uh, only this two sorry no, one minute we should not denote like this because it is the point in the uh, I just here I wrote like it is a only one set containing those point head and tail. Tail and head are there which is nothing but the whole sample space S and which is a subset of S and this belongs to C also. So, uh, you can con see that. So, basically uh, the uh, this collection what we took. So, here it is C2, C2 basically this is looks like this. So, the x if you consider C 2 is nothing but all minus minus 2 to x such that uh, 
x belongs to the real number and Borel said is we, caught, we told that uh, this is we, we just uh, mentioned that sigma pale generated by C2 and um, this is nothing but so any set if you take like this and take x inverse of this it is nothing but uh, same as this notation x less than equal to x because both has the same meanings x belongs to uh, s such that x x is less than equal to 1 minute. So, there is a confusion so sorry. So, yeah so because we are denoting this x here in the real line. So, we need to uh, use some different notation. So, otherwise there will be a confusion. It is better uh, if you take this notation because x we took as a real number and any s belongs to s as a uh, any element in suppose let us ok. So, we, we need to erase many things. So, just few things let us here we correct it. So, because x is element of s, so this is better that we denote by s here. So, that small x we are denoting as by a real number. So, now if you consider uh, this kind of set, so C2 we consider this set minus minus to x such that x belongs to real number and this b is nothing but Borel sigma field generated sigma field generated by C2 which is nothing but the Borel sigma field. Then what is x inverse of minus infinity to x? So, this is nothing but all x. So, all that is why this is the confusion all s belongs to s such that x s is less than equal to x greater than minus infinity. So, again if you denote this notation x less than equal to small x, this is also nothing but see that this notation all s belongs to s such that minus infinity to less than x of s less than equal to s. So, both are same. So, basically this is nothing but so this is nothing but x less it is it is just a notation only simplified notation x inverse of minus minus to x is nothing but we are denoting by x less than equal to x ok. So, what we understood now? So, what we understood now? So, so let us from the beginning we started a random variable 